Hello, hello. Hi, and welcome to the roundtable session. I'm excited to see so many of you already here live with us. Let's give us a few more moments for everyone to join. I am excited today to be here with two of my favorite writing friends and also two of the people who I enjoy reading most of me, to, to be really fair. Um, so kind of fangirling here, and I'm really excited about everything that we're going to talk about, to hear about all the behind the scenes stuff that's been going on in Zulis and Nick's businesses over the last few years. Let me just check in in the chat to see. Let us know if you are here with us and if you can hear us, if you can see us, everything is set up well and you are ready to dive in. In the meantime, let me quickly give you an idea of what we're going to do here. So um, you probably know, if you're here, you probably know that this roundtable is part of our Medium Writing Academy Live Launch. I love hosting events like this. And maybe you've been part of the masterclass that happened last week, too. So let us know in the chat if you've been there, if you enjoyed the session, and if there are still a few questions in your mind on how you can make Medium work for your own business, for your own writing career. If you enjoy the insights and the accountability you've you got from last week's masterclass you're getting from this session, make sure to check out Medium Writing Academy as soon as possible since the doors to the Academy are only open for two more days. If you have any questions about the program, let us know in the chat and we'll make time for them at the end of this session in the Q&A. In this roundtable, our big idea is to give you ideas of how you can use Medium to your advantage. All the different opportunities, possibilities that you have on Medium that are not necessarily obvious at first sight. And I am thrilled to talk to Nick and Zuli about all these amazing opportunities today. So let me start and let me ask you to, to start by giving the audience a quick intro about who you are and how and why you started to write on Medium. Normally I would say ladies first, but I talk to Zuli so often. Zuli, is it okay if we let Nick go first? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I love it. Can you hear me? I put headphones in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Hi everyone. Good morning from Los Angeles, California. Uh, it's bright and early here. Uh, I'm excited to be here live with you all. Uh, my name is Nick Wolney. I, uh, I've been a marketing consultant for about seven years. Um, and I am currently, my my day job, my big boy job is uh, I'm an editor. I'm an editor at CNET. Uh, and I focus on uh, consumer spending, personal finance. Um, that's my beat. And I started writing on Medium uh, a little late to the game. I started writing in 2020. Uh, you know, when we were all uh, cooped up inside, you know, with not much else to do and just kind of spending our entire lives online at the moment. Uh, I specifically started writing on Medium because for me, uh, articles have always been the way forward. They've been my style of content marketing. It's what I do personally. And it's also what I teach when I work with clients is using longer form content uh, in order to just project thought leadership, project uh, expertise, and to help your readers learn something new and take action and get the results that they want. Uh, and I found that Medium was really good for that. Uh, I, uh, when describing it to people, I kind of like to describe it as Medium is like YouTube for articles. You know, it's a little higher barrier of entry, um, but it's, it's, it's worth it. And um, I just think it's a, it's a really underrated platform. Uh, for getting your ideas out there into the world. So that's who I am and what I do. Awesome. Thank you so much. Zuli, your turn. I was on Medium. I think I joined in 2018, probably around the same time that you did, CNN. Um, it's funny. I did want to know that even then I was reading the occasional article saying that Medium was dead and over and gone already. And it's just so funny how things never change. I originally started because I had this Instagram account for my cats. Anybody who knows me knows that I have and love my two cats very dearly. And I'd read that the best way to grow your Instagram account was to build a blog and kind of like develop your reader relationships that way. So I started my Medium account like 
posting as my cats. Um, eventually I was like, all right, I actually kind of want to start writing my own stuff, not just, I don't know, cat tips or whatever. Um, and yeah, I found Medium was such a great place to do that. You could write about whatever you wanted. There were publications. I made some like amazing friends who are here on this call today. And yeah, that's my that's my villain origin story. I know that at least for you, Zoe, where you're like where and why you started and where you ended up with your whole writing career is quite different. And I'd love to ask you both about the role of Medium in your businesses, in your content strategy, in the way you communicate, reach your audience and and just manage your businesses. Um, we already mentioned your cats, how much you love them, that you started to write about them. <laughs> they, I know they still play a major role in your life, but they don't play the biggest role in your content strategy anymore, even though they still happen to be part of your stories. There's there's still an occasional cat story. But give us an overview of like what how did Medium play into your content, into your business when you started out? And how are you planning to use Medium as part of your content and business strategy as we move into 2024? Yeah, it's a good question. And I think it's very generous to call it a strategy of whatever I was doing back in like 2019, 2020. I was uh, publishing without much of an idea. Enough people had told me that I should get a website, that I got a website and was like, well, great, now what? Um, and eventually that kind of morphed into what I do today and what I think I'll be doing as long as it seems to work on Medium, which is um, use medium as a place to write stuff that i care about that i'm interested in that's uh related to my business whether that's freelance writing or building my newsletter using that to, to garner interest make a bit of a name for myself and get people to sign up for my email list and simultaneously use it to get a little bit of seo juice by writing seo content posting it on my website and importing it onto medium and that strategy has worked really well for me Yeah. And then for me, um, I would say the primary reason I publish on Medium is uh, traffic, um, building awareness uh, to my email list as well. I'm not a big social media person. I feel like the longer I'm in this game, um, uh, the less and less I use it. And also in the States, we're going into a, an election season next year. So I'm like trying to like be really good about my social media diet and just like kind of keep it to a minimum. Um, I think also the, mm, how it fits into my content strategy right now is uh, just forcing me to continue to create like net new content, net new articles, getting my writing game better. Um, just that kind of practice in public mentality. Uh, a thousand years ago before I did any of this marketing or writing stuff, um, I went to school for classical music. Um, so I'm a classically trained French hornist. Uh, oh, I was going very... to tuba. I knew there was a musical instrument, but I couldn't remember which one. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's extremely niche. Yes, uh, not an expanding industry. Uh, so uh, I don't know. I just have like a penchant for practice and I can appreciate um just like learning skills, learning new skills, but I can also appreciate that part of that practice is like doing it in public, falling on your face, uh, having stuff do well, having stuff that doesn't do well. We talk about a lot about that from just a marketing positioning perspective. Um, what you think readers want is not necessarily what they're actually reading. And so kind of just taking that information and doing with it what you will. Uh, so I appreciated that, particularly with media, particularly with, you know, I was mainly writing bylines for media publications. Um, any of you who've pitched media outlets before, you know, it's it's a, a black box, right? It's quite challenging to figure out. It's different for every publication. Now it's talking from the other side of the fence. You know, th there's, there's different rules. The publication has totally different needs at different times. Um, it can be hard to crack. Whereas on Medium, um, you can put stuff out there and get some feedback on it. And I don't think that's true for your website. If you're just starting your website, Zuli, mm -hmm. I had the same situation where I had, I, I had this website that I just did not use for years. It was largely like a, like a glorified business card, which is fine. That's good for reputation management, but it wasn't the traffic driver. 
Um, you know, it wasn't getting eyeballs on my stuff. Um, and so, yeah, I think that Medium has this, you know, cool little ecosystem where you can test things, you can try out different things and see what gets response and what doesn't get response um, and use that to kind of to kind of guide your overall strategy and what you're actually writing about. Yeah, feedback loop is a great point for like how to use Medium as a tool in your business strategy. I actually want to follow up real quick on what to write about. How do you both pick exactly which specific story to write next? Go ahead, Nick. I think you've probably got more of a strategy than I do. <laughs> um, so for me, I do kind of a combination of two things. One is similar to Zuli. I'm writing every month um, uh, SEO focused pieces that will go on my website. Um, and then I will syndicate those to Medium. So I'm happy to report that that strategy does work. Um, so I'll write something and it'll initially be published on my website. And then um, when I go to syndicate it on Medium, like I'll make it a little sexier and like, like 15% sassier, <laughs> that, you know what I mean? Just a yeah, little bit more, yeah. um, just like conversational, um, you know, particularly when you're trying to appeal, when your audience is that Google search engine, you know, you're kind of writing in a certain style and with certain keywords and with certain sentence structure. Um, and then over on Medium, like you can slip in like a Beyonce anecdote or something like that. And, you know, this is a little bit more of your personality can just shine. So I love it for that. Um, so that's one category that I do. And then the other category of writing that I try to do is just working on really, really like succinct um, stylistic pieces. Uh, so I started a publication this year. It's just me. You can't write for it. It's just me. It's just my little like sandbox um, but it's called the 700 word read and uh the only rule is every article has to be under 700 words which is hard for me oh yeah uh, and so just kind of just seeing like how much story can i like pump into this mm -hmm. you know i don't want to be too far into seo because that's a little too robot i don't want to be too far in uh like bratty sassy columnist because I feel like we start to lose the um, like adding value to your readers, you know, and just kind of, you know, like curating and presenting information in order to help people. Like, I think that's, that's a lot of the focus of, of that style of content. Um, and so, yeah, so that's kind of my content strategy in a nutshell. And even starting to look ahead to next year, I think I'm just focused on consistency, mm -hmm. uh, focused on publishing new stuff. Um, unlike the two fabulous ladies on this call, I am not super consistent on media. <laughs> like I've had my good years and I had, you know, like I just vanished for nine months last year. <laughs> you did have so, extenuating circumstances, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. And so um, what I'm happy to report is that, you know, if you take a break, a lot of your previous articles will continue will continue to hum along. And when you pick back up, then you know it's it's not this hamster wheel that some of these other platforms are where it's like, oh, you better um, you know, you better be posting every single day. Otherwise, you, you know, the algorithm's not gonna like you. I forgot. There's another reason I love writing on Medium. You don't have to engage with comments if you don't want to. <laughs> um, comments do not, or comment engagement does not impact distribution. Um, and point, yeah. whereas, yeah, whereas on other social platforms, you know, commenting back on another comment adds to the total aggregate number of comments, which is a factor in the distribution of blah, 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 blah. And so you have to reply with an emoji and all this stuff. <laughs> and so I, I don't know. I just, you know, I'm, I, you know, I love connecting with people. I love connecting with writers. I'm also not, um, I'm not here to like splash around in the toilet water, um, when the comment section gets like that. And what I like on this platform is that you don't have to do that. You can focus on well, what you're up to, your writing, what you want to say, and really have that be the focus. Hmm. I love that you mentioned that particular one, because I know a lot of people think that's the way to go. Like that's an actual strategy to get more visibility, get in front of an audience. Um, I I think I never mentioned it like that. I, it's so important actually to mention that um, your comment, I, I feel like on Medium, your comment action is your opportunity to connect with your audience. It's not how you like put or how, how you grow the distribution or make your story go viral or just make sure that more people reach it, see it like you described on Instagram or whatever, where you 
hear from strategies of, of creators saying, you know, after I post a piece, I am live for the next 30 minutes replying to everything that's going on there just to make sure that the algorithm favors my content and pushes it out to more people, etc. It's a really great point there. I actually commented back on, as far as I can know, every single comment in my in the first six months, I decided to take Medium and writing seriously. I got back to every single comment that I caught. And I feel like it taught me so much about my audience. It helped me learn a lot and get an understanding of what readers are looking for, what they like, what they dislike. But it's not a distribution strategy. That's so important to point out. I have one, one specific question, Nick, about your process of syndicating and using your website and Medium. I know a lot of people wonder about that. Like, can I use the same content? How do, does it work? What's the specific time frame, or what's the specific time between publishing a piece on your website and syndicating over to Medium? It varies. Uh, so I would say for for like SEO purposes, like I'll usually give my website the canonical link, which is just a fancy term for you know, telling, telling a search engine, like this was the original website that it was on. That way, if they rank one of them, they're going to rank my website and not the medium post. Um, but I think, um, sorry, can you repeat the question one more time? It's early. The exact time spin between a yes. piece being on your website and on medium. <laughs> Got it. Um, so it varies. So my uh, workflow, um, this might be a helpful hot tip is uh, I write everything uh, in Google Docs. And then my content management system, I use Airtable for it. I'm, I'm obsessed with Airtable. Anyone who's on my list knows that I never shut up about Airtable uh, because I just think it's awesome. It integrates with everything. That's the big That's the big piece. It integrates with every other software. Anyway, so I'll write in Google Docs and then I will check a box um, and I have it set up so that um, I have a virtual assistant for a few hours a week. And so he will, once that box gets checked, he gets a notification. So he uploads it on my website, um, gets all of that ready to go, adds the images. And then he also logs into Medium as me. Um, so I had to use support at nickwolney.com as my email on Medium in order to make that work because you don't have a password on a Medium account. You have mm -hmm. to do a two-factor from the inbox. So he has, to, he has to go into the inbox whenever he gets in. So he goes in. Um, and he will upload it as a draft. Um, so I have in, I have like a hundred drafts or something in my, in my stories right now on medium. And, um, uh, I just kind of go in and look and see, you know, when I'm trying to publish consistently, um, like, um, submitting to better marketing and things like that, just looking at pieces that I think would be a good fit for a particular publication. Uh, and then just starting to edit those, re-edit them and adjust them to punch them up a little bit. Um, some of the stuff I write for my website, I don't think is a great fit for medium things like product reviews or, you know, like, um, best convert kit review for 2025, you know, you know how, you know how that is, uh, good for SEO, but not, not necessarily what people are on medium to read, right. Mm -hmm. They're, they're interested in reading something more story driven, more narrative driven. Um, so yeah, so that's my workflow on that. I mean, if I'm, if I'm on it, then, you know, like one to two weeks in terms of lag, and that generally, if you're gonna, if you're trying to rank in search engines, if you have an SEO strategy and you're gonna publish an article in more than one place, you wanna give it like at least a week between those two publications. If you publish something on 10 different websites at once and Google is crawling all of those at the same time, it's gonna be like, uh, these are all the same. Um, and then it's just gonna only rank one of them. So giving yourself a little bit of space there. So um, that's me personally. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for giving that insight into your workflow. Um, Zuli, I know you syndicate too. Is there anything you want to add? Anything you do similarly, completely differently? Anything you think no, you want to I'd get off your chest? I do try to write for my website once a week. Um, just trying to, yeah, like get consistent. And that I cross post onto Medium or Syndicate is the, the correct technical term for it. Um, similar process as, as Nick and similar timing too. Uh, I haven't set up with Airtable or Notion or any of the other. I've tried them. I don't get along with them. I need to like sit down and dedicate some time to figuring out how they work because smarter people than me love them. So there's something I'm missing there. <laughs> I just, I, I'm a copy paster to be totally honest with everybody here. Um, 
And then I guess the only other thing on timing is I have stuff that I only publish to Medium rather than for my website for a kind of a similar reason as Nick was saying, right? There, there's an audience on Medium. It's not quite as dry and like pure value oriented as the SEO audience. It's not quite as witty or like turn of phrasey or personality driven as like some of the columnist stuff that you might want to write. It's the Medium audience wants something in between, something informational, educational, with value but something that they're still going to enjoy like a happy medium so the stuff that i write on medium that i only write for medium um like i think <laughs> i should stick more to my niche but i think if i only stuck to my niche i wouldn't enjoy writing and i wouldn't be here so occasionally i indulge in writing articles about taylor swift or <laughs> um i'm trying to think of something else i wrote like, like a lot i've been doing a lot of ai stuff lately because that's just what i'm interested in um so kind of a mix between good content strategy and indulging in my love for writing about things that are interesting to me. Awesome. Let's go to the question I was actually most excited about today. Um, talk to me about the most weird, unexpected, cool opportunities you got through Medium, through your work on Medium, through people discovering your stories specifically on Medium. I know a lot has happened to me that I definitely didn't plan or that I didn't explicitly work for. I know uh, I got clients reaching out, which was really fun in, in back in 2020 because I didn't have an email address in my profile and I had people reaching out to Instagram private messages and trying to reach out on LinkedIn, but I was not really checking LinkedIn very often. So it was... Instagram DMs is where I saw my client requests. I got to speak uh, on national TV here in Austria. I had been on so many incredible podcasts, interviews, um, different kinds of shows. It's been a fun ride and it's been a lot of stuff that I definitely didn't think would be possible just because I started to write on the internet. And I'm looking forward to hearing what happened to you both, like what are the most weird or cool opportunities that you attracted through your writing on Medium? Zulis, still thinking. I, Nick, I'm go, I'm go first. Yeah, um, I mean, I had a, I've had a couple of cool ones in terms of like, uh, like Business Insider has syndicated some of my pieces. I've gotten, I think that's happened to everyone. Where sometimes a publication will uh, come out of the woodwork and say like, "Hey, this was great. Can we syndicate it?" onto our site and we'll give you the byline and, you know, hey, no pitching and you got a new media byline. That's, you know, that's great, easy credibility points. Um, but the weirdest one, okay, here it is, is um, Elon Musk's assistant uh, bitched me out. Um, oh, I'm sorry, can you curse? I'm sorry. I just, I remember reading your article and I also remember reading the copycat article that came like two years later. Right. Yep. Okay, so let's, let's gossip. Okay, <laughs> so, um, I was I was seeing good success on Medium in 2020 and 2021 doing a style of article that probably all of us do and, and that many of us see on Medium. I call it the popularity piggyback. Um, and other people have other you know, cute little names uh, about it. Um, basically, when like if you if you name drop something recognizable in like a headline or you use a popular public figure or something as a like an anecdote to help illustrate your point the familiarity of that public or that very public persona or place or thing that can help people kind of get in the door like i was just found that i would get like good results that was true in writing for entrepreneur magazine as well those articles always ended up doing the best in terms of traffic and distribution because people recognize that so I read this story in CNBC that I thought was really interesting. It was from 2018. It was talking about um, in Elon Musk's biography, this, uh, there's this anecdote where he, um, long story short, he fires his assistant. Um, his, he, his assistant never got a raise for 12 years, which is so shitty. Uh, and then she was like, you know, I'm doing way more than assistant work. I'm doing executive work. You need to pay me as an executive. And so the, how the story goes is that he, as it was told in the biography, is uh, he told the assistant, okay, take two weeks PTO. And if I still need you when you get back, then I'll promote you. Um, and at the end of the two weeks, he was like, don't come back. Uh, and so I found it interesting to kind of retell that anecdote um, and talk a little bit about 
uh, you know, just negotiation, like, you know, potential pros and cons. I think that's, a, that's an interesting topic. Certainly the comments on that, you know, is like very divisive uh, commentary on it, on that story. Um, I, at no point did I say this was my story, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's what I think, like the popularity piggybacks, like taking, I think there's, there's definitely merit. It, this is just like music. This is just like practicing music. There is merit in like mimicking, not plagiarizing, but mimicking, seeing like, okay, that's a story. How would I tell that story? Or like, yeah. if I was going to, that's why I'm doing this publication, the 700 word read, practice and telling stories in under 700 words is because, you know, how, wh what would be how I tell that story? And that kind of helps just develop voice um, and your writing style. So I published it. Uh, it went, um, it went really, uh, I guess we call that viral. It just it had a lot of distribution um, very suddenly. And uh, I was really fortunate. Um, I had my little sign up for my email list, Bleh. um, you know, about a totally unrelated topic, you know, it's just like, uh, like my templates or whatever. Um, I got a, about a thousand email subscribers off that wow. one article because I UTM'd it. Um, overall, I think got about 180,000 views on that article, made a nice chunk of money, paid for my move to Los Angeles, actually. So good. Um, you know, and so that's why I'm like, this platform's awesome. Um, but uh, then I got some DMs on Instagram. It was from this girl on, and she's like, I'm on a yacht and you're wrong about Elon. You know, I work for him and that story is not true. That never, ever happened. And you need to take that article down now. Oh my god! Uh, so sassy. I know it was so sassy, and uh, I don't know. It's just kind of interesting because uh, it was not my original journalism. You know what I mean? Like I was, if only, if anything, I felt kind of impostery. I was like, "Well, this is uh, this is an anecdote drawn." Which I mean, I cited that right, but like this is an anecdote drawn from his biography, which has already been around for years, has already been covered in much bigger publications. This anecdote. Um, but just the way it stirred the pot, I think that was the, for me, that was when I saw the, really like the power of distribution potential on medium, right? Like we don't play for that. There, there's a category of writers who are definitely trying to go viral, trying to go viral, trying to go viral. Um, I just think that game is too exhausting to play, but it's certainly nice when something like that does happen. Um, and then I believe a year or two later, someone else did that same anecdote. They did an article on that same anecdote and, and also had a similar result with that. So um, yeah, so I think that was definitely the weirdest thing that happened to me. <laughs> um, but you know, now I can say that I've been, um, that I've been shut down by Elon's assistant. <laughs> Oh my gosh. For the record, I was thinking about this because um, one of my friends got laid off after or after going on maternity leave. And I was like, that must happen so often because when you're gone, they realize that they can do without you. But it must be so unfair because like that could be true of anyone, right? Like if Elon Musk took two weeks off, the company might not even know. Well, I guess Twitter would probably notice, but like there might not be any change for the better. Oh, I find that so frustrating. But um, it was a really interesting article and it's wild how medium, like you just write something that you think is interesting. And then the person you've written about is like, Hey, what's going on? You wrote about my life and you were, you know, like just so weird that it gives you the opportunity. I think for me, my, I was trying to think if I wanted to go positive or negative and I'll do both. So positive. I think for me, the weirdest and most unexpected one was the first one. Um, in 2020, maybe, uh, some guy reached out to me and this is before I had my website, before I had my email address, I had my YouTube channel and this guy found me by reading my article, Googling me, going to my YouTube channel, finding the email address that I had like hidden on my YouTube channel and contacting me through that saying like, Hey, I want to hire you to write some articles for me. And the fact that this guy liked my content, that a had found my content, liked it enough to like hunt me down and despite my totally unprofessional lack of like even a business website at that point or anything like that was still able to find me and wanted to try to hire me because of something I'd written on Medium. That was my first paid client. He paid me $300 to write an article and I was like, is this real life? Is this happening to me right now? That was unbelievable. Just mind blowing. And that was actually the start of like my whole writing business really was just this guy saying, Hey, I want to pay you to write stuff like this for me. That was just crazy. 
the negative one is I got threatened um, by a lawsuit for writing a negative review about someone and it didn't oh, yeah. really go viral. It was just like ranking for a keyword for this guy's website. For the record, I did think that it was a, a very scammy product and I wrote about it and he was like, I'm threatening you with a, I can't remember if he wanted with defamation yeah and i was like point kevin point to me where i was wrong in this article like i was so careful to only use but then i didn't i did end up taking it down because there was a ch he seemed like a petty man and i was worried that he would go through with the lawsuit even that he would lose just to try to take me down a peg and i was like kevin i'm about to get married and go on my honeymoon i will take it down <laughs> oh so i'm still kind of mad about that so that's, that's think the weirdest I think that brings up a great point about um, just the power of the platform mm -hmm. and the potential visibility of the platform, right? Um, that, you know, going back to reputation management, which is a lot of um, what I focus on personally is Medium has so much DA, has so much domain authority. It's such a big website that it's very possible like your review becomes like one of the top results when people google the name of that website yeah. right like i could see that being like a you know something where they're like oh god um so yeah so Zula, yeah it's really the scammy product killer yeah. oh my gosh well when i when i wrote it i was thinking of people who were going to be googling it thinking like should i spend the money on this i was writing for them it never once crossed my mind that the person who created the product would be like <laughs> searching for well i guess I guess it makes sense, but I've had people write negative re reviews about me before, and I've never felt like I had the right to demand that they take them down. Like if it's their honest experience, who am I to say like, no, you're wrong. You have to take that down. And I guess I thought that most other people would be like that, but no, some people really dislike it when you write negative things about them. And now it has changed my writing strategy. Now where I, when I write things, I'm like, how would I feel if the person I'm writing this about saw this? And that does, I mean, like you said, Nick, like there's a chance with this domain authority, there's always a chance that the subject of your story is going to find your article. And it's different factors, right? It's domain authority is one. And then what happened to me is I, I think that was like three years ago too. I realized my articles were getting traffic from LinkedIn. And I had no idea how or why, because I wasn't using LinkedIn, especially not to promote my articles. And I started to put my name in the LinkedIn search bar. And I realized there were people just sharing my articles as, you know, LinkedIn posts where you saw the preview of the article. Just readers who came across the article and wanted to share it with their network. And I was my I was totally blown away by that because I had never shared anyone else's content with my friends or my LinkedIn network. Um, but people do that. And you're, it's it's weird if you think about that at scale, you can reach a lot of people and potentially the right people or the wrong people the way you look at it. If you reach the guy who created the product and he wants you to take down the review. But on the other side, in a smaller scale, sometimes if you reach one right person with an article it's probably worth writing the article like mm. if it's if like it's one person who might lead to a massive opportunity whether that's career voice or you know reputation wise and if you think of your work being spread and shared for you on different platforms i think that just amplifies the massive power responsibility and opportunity you have by creating content and especially long form content. I guess nobody is going to share Instagram posts or TikTok videos on LinkedIn or with their friends and family. It's just the depth of, of the content you have on Medium is typically just, it's more, it's more than just a few lines. It's more than a few seconds. You spend more time reading the piece you spend spend more thought on it and that's probably why you end up wanting to share it with more people because it resonated and you already have that kind of connection with a mm -hmm. writer that's why i like that's part of what i feel is really beneficial on medium too if someone watches one video of yours that's like 10 seconds or reads one instagram post with a short tiny caption or a tweet and it's like whatever just a few hundred characters 
they might really like that specific content, but there is no relationship. You hope that they follow you, they see more of your work, etc. But on Medium, if somebody reads a 1500 word article, the relationship you create is already so much deeper. They know so much more about who you are or the story you tell or your expertise, your point of view, that it's much more than someone who has just come across your content for a few seconds. It just gives you so much more room. And I think it's also brilliant that we are allowed to have the CTA at the bottom of our articles right there, not, not having a workaround, not saying check the link in the comments section or whatever, but that we're directly allowed to promote our work right there under the article when people are done reading. Mm -hmm. All right. I have seen a bunch of questions in the Q and A tab. Um, on various topics, also on what to write about, how to pick what to write about, etc. But I have one quick question to both of you, and I'm looking forward to your answers, actually. What are your two quick tips for anyone who wants to start writing on Medium, wants to finally take it seriously or take it to the next level? What are the two most important tips you would give to those who are watching live, those who are watching the recording, who want to make a change or who need that quick tip to finally get started. I'm going to do one practical and one, I guess I would consider it emotional. The, my practical one is start publishing in publications right now. Like, don't try, try to go as long that as you can. Mine. Oh, sorry, Nick. That was <laughs> mine. It's such a good one. You can, I mean, I want to hear your take on it too. <laughs> sorry for getting in before you. <laughs> But I, I'm curious to hear if you agree. From my from my view, publications are so good for two reasons. They even as a beginner, you get access to an audience. Like if you have zero followers on Medium and you publish with a publication, you get you get re, re, uh, views just from those readers that have already established their interest in that topic. And number two is they act as a little bit of a quality control. Learning how to write on Medium for Medium's audience, which as we've talked about, is just a little different than other online audiences. Publication editors know what that audience is like better than you do as a beginner. And if you publish with them and you get your story accepted, that tells you you're writing in a format that's good. You're writing about a topic that's good. Like you, it's giving you a lot of positive feedback. Or if you don't get accepted, that's useful negative feedback that you can use to iterate and try again. And my emotional tip is write about what's interesting to you. I know there's a lot of temptation to write about like what you see is popular on Medium or write about things that you think are going to go viral that might have worked in the past. It doesn't work anymore on Medium, at least not for me or for the other writers I've spoken to. And if you try to do that strategy, you're just gonna end up doing what you feel is selling out for literally no result, right? Like you're gonna write your eight habits of highly effective people article, get three views and be like, well, why did I even bother trying to copy Stephen Covey? Write about what's interesting to you and you're gonna find people who are interested in reading it. Okay, Nick, I'm keen to hear your thoughts also. I just, so I'll give three because my, I'll, one of them is just the plus one on publications. My personal experience is that I started in January, 2020. I got very few results for the first three or four months. And then I started submitting to publications. You know, I had my like 46 followers or whatever. Um, and just submitting to that publication, you're right. It did allow for that, like um, just extra broadcasting there. Um, and it allowed me to learn about different publications and, you know, try different things like, Ooh, mm -hmm. I've never written about UX, but I have an opinion about it, you know, in terms of how it applies to written content. Okay. UX collective. Um, okay. You know, I don't use my college degree or I thought I didn't, I'm going to write in post-grad survival guide about how studying the arts helps me in my career now, even though I'm not playing music anymore, you know, mm -hmm. just stuff like that. Um, so plus one on that. Uh, let's see, two things. One, I think it would behoove you to study different article types mm. and to study different article formats. Um, I think sometimes people approach this platform from like a free writing perspective, like what they would do in a diary or journal. There are different formats and different types of articles. And everyone on this call is quite smart. You know, it's, I just think it, the audience of people who are reading articles in 2023, you know, it's just a more discerning audience. It's, a, it's an audience that likes to learn. Um, and so I think take a moment to learn about some of these different essay types, learn about like, 
you know, we've got obvious ones like what a listicle is and things like that. But it's like, okay, what is what is the inverted pyramid? You know, like that's that's news writing. What is a what is literary journalism? You know, what is you know, there's so many cool different formats. I almost feel like writing is a misnomer. People are like, what do you do? Oh, I'm a writer. It's just it's just it's so broad. It's you know so non-descriptive, and so I think that can also help you find your voice. Um, and then I'm gonna kind of plus one Zuli's other uh, her emotional tip. I think it's really important to continue writing about what you enjoy and what you're passionate about. For some of it, Ashley had that question in the Q and A. Um, mm. She was talking about how she studied art and history and is an accidental marketer. Um, I think that you will sell your soul if you if all you do is write for the algorithm um and so continuing to sprinkle in i think two-thirds one-third is great um mm -hmm. but you know like like you have a strategy your strategy is to you know increase your views get more email subscribers uh, break a new record in the partner program payouts whatever it is um and you know having content that uh, publishing content and writing stuff that's going to help fulfill that strategy but then also having like some fun stuff too uh i had a teacher in music school he called it the fun session so he wanted us to do three practice sessions a day and one session was fundamentals and then one session was all the music we were responsible for knowing right like our parts and orchestra and whatever um and then the third session was the fun session so it was like i i i learned lady gaga's fame monster album in every key on the French horn, you know, it's just like stuff like that. That's just like silly and dumb and, and not, um, not results driven, not performance driven, but just like keeps your fire burning bright. Um, I think that's really important because, uh, when you're only writing for the algorithm or you're only writing to like get X, Y, Z result, you can even see it. Those of us who've been on medium for a while now, you see people come in, uh, like a bat out of hell, and then you see them disappear after about a year or so. And it's it's just, you know, it it gets uh, it gets tiring, you know, if you're not writing something, if you're not doing something you're actually interested in and passionate about or, or sprinkling that in at least. So that's yeah. my tip as well. Yeah. Love that. Um, I saw a bunch of questions in the Q&A tab and um, I will stay in for a few more minutes. I'm not sure if you two have a little more time to to stay with me in the Q and A. Um, I, I have know to jet you... at the hour, but I can take it right up to the hour. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, I don't have I a hard that's... stop. I can hang out. Cool. Um, so let me just quickly remind everyone who is here with us um, about what we have going on with the Medium Writing Academy Live Edition, so we can answer all the questions at the end. We have about a minute delay in the chats anyway. So if you have any questions, if there's anything you want us to reply to, feel free to use the chat now, move your questions to the Q&A tab so we can find them and we'll get back to those questions in a few short minutes. Um, all right. I. Just lost my slides. Give me a second. No problem. Take your time. Let's let's Zuli. Let's rapid fire some of these some of these comments. Yeah. Um, all right. Where we're at it. Should we do it? Um, or I'll, here. Let's go in Q and A. I'm going to start from start the, from the bottom. bottom. Yeah. Yeah. With um, Gabby's question. What to, Gabby? You asked this question like 30 minutes ago. I really appreciate your patience. Um, what does impact distribution the most if comments do not? Uh, I mean. We don't know <laughs> fully. <laughs> and that's kind of the annoying thing, thing about all these platforms <laughs> in terms of algorithms, right? And trying to game an algorithm. And as soon as people, that happens on YouTube, you can ask Zuli about that for YouTube. That happens so much on that platform where it's like, as soon as people think they have the algorithm figured out, like Google shuffles the deck, like every six or 12 months, keep people on their toes. Um, the things I think impact distribution, quality of content, um, a really, really good lead, like a really good, like first five paragraphs. So headline and subheadline are obviously important. That's the front door to your article. If you're having a traffic problem, if people are not looking at your articles, um, then that might be one of the reasons why, like tinkering around, like reading up on headlines. Um, I just think it's an accessibility play, having headlines be clear and easy to read. It doesn't have to be this, you know, 
do these six things or you're gonna die you know that's some people that's some people do yeah the yeah. one secret it's like well this is not a secret you've written an article about it <laughs> anyway uh yeah the gimmicks yeah, so, that do not work but yeah yeah uh, my experience is that distribution i mean claps and reads don't impact it a whole lot i have personally had stuff that did not get a lot of claps and reads but got distributed very well i've also gotten stuff that had just a high amount of engagement but overall that view count was not super high um and so you know i don't think there's one formula or you know one best practice other than just follow medium's distribution standards to the t you know, Medium wants to distribute quality content. It's just like Google. It's just like a lot of these platforms, right? They want to show off some of the different um, articles that are on there. Um, so just making sure you've dot your, dotted your I's and crossed your T's with regard to that distribution piece. Yeah. I know like Zumi has a brilliant way of explaining how <laughs> Medium distributes your, your work. I think, she, I think you gave this I'll do it again. Talk, I love doing it. <laughs> at least twice over the last two weeks. But if you want to give it again, I think there's still people who haven't heard it and who love it. Yeah. I want to hear it. I haven't heard it. Well, it's it's basically just uh, uh, saying what you said, but with more hand, hand gestures. So caveat, like Nick said, we don't, I am not a medium engineer. I don't know for sure if this works, but I've spoken with people at medium and they haven't told me I'm wrong. So this is my best knowledge for how it works. When you publish on Medium, your article goes to people that Medium thinks is going to be interested in it. Because what you have to remember is beneath everything, Medium wants to make money. And the way they do that is to make sure that the people who are paying $5 a month get awesome articles that keep them wanting to pay those $5 a month. So you publish an article on Medium. Medium is like, all right, who's going to be interested in this? The people following this author, probably some of them. If you publish in a publication, probably some publication followers. And if you use your tags, when you publish your story, you can choose up to five tags, probably some people that have chosen to follow those tags. If you're a beginner, you don't have any followers, you don't publish in a publication, that means you're already cutting yourself off at the knees just from the get-go. All you have to rely on are tags, which is difficult. Medium's like, all right, well, let's show it to, I don't know, I'm picking a number, five people from the following pool, five people from the publication pool, five people from the tag pool. If those people, those that initial small pool of people, if they react well, if they click on your story, if they scroll past, if they clap, if they comment, if they follow you, if they engage with it positively, Medium's like, awesome, we've got a winning article on our hands. Let's show this to more people. And the pool expands. If this group of people, the second group of people also reacts positively, you know, they click on the title, so it's a good title. They stick past the introduction, so it's not clickbait. They like engage with it well. That's, that's showing Medium that it's a quality piece of work. And that pool goes wider and wider and wider until, you know, eventually it goes beyond its intended audience. People don't click, people don't clap. They don't, you know, they bounce after the title. And that's how you get articles that go not just viral, but from 10 to 100 views or 100 to 1,000 views or 1,000 to, as Nick and I have both experienced, 100,000 views in some cases. That's my awesome. TED Talk. <laughs> Love it. Again, listening at least for the third time, it's still, I, I love how much sense it makes and how kind of like, I, I always have this visual image in my mind of how it, I, and I think you actually created a there's Canva a image at, a little, at some yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, love that. All right. Um, I have my slides back. I am seeing a few new questions in the Q&A, so feel free to continue using it if you're still with us. Um, I'll give you a quick overview of what you can expect when you join us inside Medium Writing Academy. I already saw that a few of those watching us live um, have joined the MWA, so if that's you, let us know in the chat. And also let us know if you're still on the fence and we're still trying to figure out if it's the right thing for you, If you are going to benefit from the program or if now is the right time. Um, as I've already mentioned a dozen times over the last few days, we only open the live cohort for the Medium Writing Academy once or twice per year. And I'm so excited that I have Zuli on board for the entire live cohort with me this time, because it means you'll get to learn from two different teachers, two different writers who often agree, sometimes disagree on, on uh, feedback on pieces. And I'm really looking forward to having 
Zoe's expertise and point of view with me in the entire cohort. So when you decide to join us inside the Medium Writing Academy Live Edition now, you are going to get access to our members area, which consists of pre-recorded video lessons and PDF guides, PDF worksheets that will help you go through all the content, implement it, use it, and take action. But on top of all that pre-recorded sessions and the idea the whole content you're getting inside the members area, you're getting four weeks of live coaching with me and Zuli. We have scheduled almost daily, almost every weekday sessions um, after Thanksgiving. So we're starting before Thanksgiving, but then we have almost each day we have a session going on at totally different times. This is a question we receive often. So we're covering different time zones. We're making sure you'll be able to join at least a few sessions, even if you're working full time and you're really busy. So we go into group coaching sessions to answer your questions, to give you firsthand feedback on your drafts and to make sure that you feel confident that you're doing the right thing. Um, we also have live writing sprints. I know one of the key things holding our students back has always been making time to actually write, getting out of that mindset of always learning, always coming up with ideas, but never finishing a draft. I want to help you do that through accountability and live writing sessions where we just join a live call with us. You write together with us for an hour. And by the end, you're ready to ship your story to send it to the publication you've written it for or self-publish if that's the purpose of the story. We also created a MWA boost world, including stories of myself, Zuli, Nick, where you get access to hundreds of boosted stories and the links, the tags, the publication, and our thoughts on why the story was boosted in the first place, which I think is an incredibly useful resource if you are not sure why some stories are getting boosted, others are not, if you want to get an idea of how boosted stories are structured, how they are written, what they have in common, and how much how how different they can also be. That's what we see too. Like in the past, I feel like viral medium stories had a lot in common. They were very similar to each other. Now we have much more room, like even titles, title images, formatting structure of the stories that go viral right now are so different to each other. Sometimes I am surprised how well a poorly structured and formatted story can, can do in on the new medium, so to say, through boosting and the internal distribution system. We also created a bunch of bonus workshops for you on topics like editing, your writing workflow. Zuli is talking about how to use AI tools to your advantage for idea generation, for feedback, but also a workshop on how to win your first freelance clients by writing on Medium, for example, and many more. And while doing all of that, while going through the course, joining the sessions and writing with us, you are also being invited to join a private student community. So you can connect with all the other members inside the course, get our feedback, get our support, get some motivation when you feel down and just chat with us over the next couple of weeks and let us know how your journey and progress is going. All right, that's it. Um, what you should really know is that doors are only open for two more days. So like, we have our kickoff session at the beginning of next week. So if you are still on the fence, make sure to reach out to us, reach out to me if you have any questions um, so we can give you all the answers you need before it's too late and you can jump in on the live edition offer before we close the doors. All right, let's see what else we want to chat about. Nick, I know you have to run. Is there any, are there any final words or is there anything you've seen in the chat that you want to reply to before leaving? Um, I just think, that it's lonely on the internet, you know, from time to time. And so that's why, um, th that's why I'm a part of this launch. I think, you know, there, it's one thing to learn those little technical details that all these different platforms have. 
it's another, we all know this, it's another to, you know, just kind of be in a community with other people who have a similar goal. It's like I started going to yoga classes again, right? It's just, it's as simple as that, just being in the room with other people and you got one person doing a handstand for the warm up, and it's like, all right, that's nice. You go off there and do that. I'm gonna do my little modified lunge over here, right? But it's just, but that that feeling of like belonging um, and community, particularly around a specific goal, I think that's like a really important piece of whatever you aspire to do online, whether it's MWA, whether it's a different platform, whether it's a different program, just finding that right balance and finding that formula that's best for you. Um, I think it's actually really, really key to finding your groove um, and finding what works and what doesn't, getting new ideas that you would have never come up with yourself. Um, and so, yeah, so it's a pleasure to, to be a part of this launch. Um, and I think y'all should join. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't want to announce this too early on, but I, I, I feel excited about it. So I'm just going to put it down here. If Nick is very likely going to join us for a bonus session in December or even January. Um, to train you, or give give us a hint. What are you going to chat about in that bonus workshop? Um, we're going to talk about how to pitch articles to media publications. Uh, so if you have ever wanted like the as seen in, you know, those logos, here's the thing about media, speaking on it from both sides of the fence. Um, media is one of the last remaining things that creates instant credibility online people land on a website or they land on a web page, whatever, and they see that as seen in, boop, um, it, it just creates this immediate effect um, in terms of trustworthiness that is increasingly challenging in an, in an AI world, you know, it's increasingly challenging to develop that. Um, and there are, you know, there are different types of features in media. There's getting a little one sentence quote about, you know, the chapstick that you used, you know, is this just not relevant to what you want to talk about. And then there's the contributed article or the feature where the whole piece is about you or it's written by you. And those kinds of pieces, those are the kinds of pieces that make clients appear out of thin air and be like, hey, I read this article and I want to hire you. Or, hey, read this article from you, um, you know, want, want to go speak. I did an article in Fortune last year and I got a national television interview off of it, wow. right? And it was, and the producer was like, hey, I read your article, can you come on on Friday, right? And so that's the power of contributed articles. And the great news is that all the skills that you need are in Medium Writing Academy and just about writing articles in general, right? And so we'll talk in a workshop specifically about how to tailor your articles, both your articles and your pitches um, to to write for publications, you know, whether you want to do it as an unpaid contributor, whether you want to be paid as a freelance writer could be another income source, some nice little side money. Um, uh, I'll share with you everything I know. Uh, and I think it's a really great compliment to kind of the, the reliable publishing mechanism that is medium in terms of getting articles out consistently and to have that also going off on the side. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for even um, doing the, the the whole workshop in the first place. And I think it's actually a really great addition. That's going to be at the end of the cohort when you're done with all the core modules and we've done our group coaching sessions. So you can kind of already work on the next steps for your writing career. All right. Um, Thank you so much, Nick, for joining us today, for uh, making time, for chatting with us, for sharing all your wisdom, <laughs> for, for gossiping with us. <laughs> um, have an Love amazing it. rest of the day. We'll let you go and we'll be here for a few more minutes for everyone who still has questions. Awesome. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye, Appreciate Nick. it. Bye. Yeah, happy to charge through and get some Q&As answered. Uh, I'm just going to start from the bottom as well. So from Jeremy, is this roundtable going to be available later? Jeremy, I'm assuming that you've gone to your meeting. Yes, for everybody still wondering, uh, the, I, I believe, right, Sinan, the recording is going to be available for anybody who wants to rewatch any particularly juicy bits. Um, and we'll be sending it out to anybody who registered. Exactly. Um... I have one question from Richard, but I'm not 100% sure I 
get it. So Richard asked, let's be practical. Do you explain how I can change formats to pull my work from a Word file to Medium? I mean, the Medium editor is pretty intuitive. I have a video, I think it's like called how to use the Medium editor. It's from 2021, but the editor hasn't changed. So yeah. it works the exact same. I copy paste it. I make sure that my title is formatted in header one format. My subtitle is header two, that it's got an image, that my paragraphs are broken up into things that are not too hard for human eyeballs to read. That I don't have too much bolding or italics or things like that. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a copy paste job. Exactly. We actually have this, uh, a, a very basic how to use the editor uh, video lesson inside. Oh, awesome. Yeah the introduction module of the Medium Writing Academy too. And actually the most exciting or the thing that I love most about our group coaching sessions, about the live sessions, is that we are on a Zoom call with you and we share our screens. So if you ever feel like you don't know where to find a specific button, you don't know how to submit your piece to a publication, something's off in the editor. Sometimes there are weird tiny settings in the back end that you feel like you change the title on your story, but you save it and it still appears as the old title. There's some weird stuff that is hard to explain via text. And that's why we love to use the group coaching sessions where we can show you our screen and we show you exactly where to click to find what you're looking for. So um, you can be sure about all the technical aspects of publishing on Medium. I saw a question before too about, you know, what if I'm not super confident about tech, you really don't have to be like, that's the part that got me most excited about starting to write on Medium, to be honest. I had no idea how to build a website. I still don't know much about SEO. Yeah. There is no easier way to write on the internet than writing on Medium. Like, period. Yeah. <laughs> there, yeah, like, I mean, there isn't. It's just that you don't have to worry about domain hosting, buying a domain name, the difference between Bluehost and Goat. Like this is, yeah, exactly. When I was creating my blog post my blog for my cats, I thought about WordPress, I thought about Squarespace, and I ended up with Medium because it was by far the easiest one to use. You log in, you press the right button, which is up on the W-R-I-T-E, not R-I-G-H-T, and then you just start typing, and then your story's out there. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, I see a question by uh, Nancy asking what date and times are the life coaching sessions in the MWA? I think she, she, she wants to write. Um, we have a whole schedule mapped out and we have surveys going on with our students to figure out what the best session times are. If you want to know the exact time slots, um, send us an email to support at mediumwritingacademy.com and I can send you the full existing schedule. But as I said before, we have almost daily sessions after Thanksgiving and we have it at different time slots. So we cover different time zones and days of the time. So I'm sure you will be able to join at least a few sessions. And we're doing so many sessions on purpose because you don't have to join every session. You join the ones that you can join live. You can catch the replays on those that you miss. And you can always share your questions in the member community, in the student community, and on the members platform where you have the video lessons too. So there are a lot of ways to get your questions answered. I see an interesting question from Alberto that I wanted to touch on. Uh, I don't know if you see it, CNM. It's, I have an article published on Better Humans with just a 40% read ratio and 112 views in two weeks. I got feedback on it from Walter Ryan. He said it's a good article, but it was perfect for the old medium, not the new one. What makes a tutorial boost worthy? There are two things I wanna say about this. Number one, if it only has a 40% read ratio, unless it's got like a really amazing title, it's not great for the old medium even because 40% read ratio means that you are not delivering on your headline promise. Um, people are clicking on it and then being like, oh, this isn't what I thought it was and then leaving. It's, I'm not saying this to be harsh. This is just what the feedback of the read ratio is really good for giving you. It just says something here isn't aligning for my reader expectations. But I do want to address the second part of your question, which is what makes a tutorial boost worthy? The biggest difference between the old medium and today's new medium is that new medium wants there to be a reason that you, Alberto, specifically are writing this story. So I thought from Nick's example earlier, this was so interesting in that I don't think that by, that article would go viral today because there wasn't really a huge amount of context or like a lot of the stuff that I've written in the past that was just like 
slightly more interesting write-ups of things that have already happened that don't actually have that much to do with me. You, there needs to be a personal reason for you writing the article. Either you wrote in the article, I did this and this is how it worked for me, or I teach this to other people and this is how it works for them, or I have a degree in this, or this is something that happened to me, right? Like a reason that you have the experience needed to write this. And it's designed to kind of cut down on the kind of viral articles that we've all read before that are just re repackaged uh, Wikipedia articles. You know what I mean? Like something that somebody's going to be really glad that they paid $5 a month to read. That's what I would say makes a tutorial boost worthy. Personal experience and ideally personal results. What happened when you did this? Yeah. And I'd love to add to that or slash end just a really unique perspective on something. Yeah, great if, point. if you don't, you don't oh, like not every boosted story has a strong personal connection, but there has to be uniqueness. There has some wow factor, something that we haven't seen dozens of times already. Something that like, if I read the headline or the intro or scroll through the article, I should not expect that it's, or I should, there has to be something curiosities provoking that makes me want to read more because it feels like this is something that I haven't read hundreds of times already. Mm -hmm. Just this differentiating factor is, is what a lot of people struggle with. And I get it. It's hard. You want to write in a simple way. You want to write what you learned and you want to summarize it. It's not necessarily going to work in the me new medium anymore. And um, I just saw a question by uh, Kiara asking about, um, do you have any advice on the actual process of regularly generating article ideas that are valuable to your target readers and good for the new medium? And I love that question because it's, we actually go into idea generation in module two of the Medium Writing Academy. I totally revamped the course content for this round. Um, normally we talked about ideas in module three and we teach differently now because ideas play a much bigger role. As we already described in the past, you would write a generic, simple listicle. You could go hyper viral. It could reach hundreds of thousands of readers and you could make a ton of money. Not so much anymore, like in the new medium, the idea itself matters a lot more and you cannot copy paste as you could in the past. So we do talk a lot about how to generate article ideas. We also will give a lot of feedback on your ideas. This is what we'll do a lot in the first two weeks of the course. You will share your ideas with us whether it's a headline or you have maybe you have a basic first outline for the article and we will tell you what we think is good or bad about that specific idea and how we would reframe it, how we would continue working on that article or that specific idea that you have. So this is a really important point. And what we want to avoid is that you write articles on ideas or that you write articles with titles that won't get discovered that readers will not even see and that will just get buried under the millions of pieces that get published on medium every single year so idea generation is one idea validation is equally important and we will take a lot of time for both inside the medium writing academy live edition all right um what else do you want from Book. Zan, uh, can I submit my article to a publication while waiting for the review of another publication? Um, I would say no, unless you're, because a, a story can only live in one publication at a time ever on Medium. You can't have duplicate articles in multiple publications. So I would say whoever your first pick is for your publication, put it there and wait until you've passed the review period that the publication has on their whatever their editorial guidelines are. If, at that point, then you can definitely feel free to withdraw it and put it somewhere else, but don't withdraw it if you're still hoping to have it published at that first one. Yeah. Um, and congrats on getting your story published at Illuminations Mirror. It is getting your first story in a publication is just such an amazing feeling. Yeah. Um, another interesting question. Uh, what do you recommend to write on the subhead? I. In my opinion, 
the point of the subheading and also like the way we write titles has changed a lot on medium mm. over the last couple of months but i feel like subheadings too um this will slightly vary depending on what the exact story is and what type of story is whether it's educational whether it's more essay type etc but typically your subheading has to add more to the title it cannot be an addition to the title that is necessary you cannot expect the title and the subtitle to only make sense together because some people will not even see your subtitle and i'm I, I would actually love to hear your thoughts on this, Zuli, because this is something that we haven't talked about a lot and that we're probably going to talk a lot in the, in the academy. It's so hard to give a universal answer to this question, I think, because it depends so much on what your title is, what the format of your story is, where you're trying to get it accepted. I normally try to do something that like piques a little bit of interest in the article like it like hints at the answer to the question that I'm asking in my title, but without giving it away. Um, to your point, CNM, I I do try to make sure like okay, if I switched my title and my subtitle, would it still make sense? Now this isn't this isn't applicable for all stories. Like some formats just don't work with this, but that is normally pretty good at answering the question of like, am I doing this like to is my title too clickbaity? Am I answering everything that I need to in my title and my subtitle is just adding to that? like trying out the thought experiment of what would happen if I swapped these. It's, I just find it to always be a good practice. Um, but yeah, I think it's really hard to say, this is what you should always write in your subhead because it just, it varies so much. Yeah, exactly. And one more question from Simon asking, can you recommend a posting frequency on Medium that will allow me to slowly gain traction without the process becoming overwhelming? Also, what length do you find works best? And again, the the, the answer really is it depends on you, on your schedule, on how your life looks like, how much time you can make. I, I hate, or it's not possible for me to tell you how much you should write or publish if I don't know how much time you have and how much time it takes you to write an article. The beauty of the way Medium works now compared to before is that you don't have to stress that much about posting frequency because you have to focus more on giving each single article the highest potential chance to get boosted and to get distributed, to get published in major publications. So it has the best possible chance to reach a lot of readers. That's always been the case, but there, like in the past, it worked if you just throw a lot of spaghetti on the wall and you just hope that some of it might get picked up by the algorithm and did really well. Not so much anymore, to be honest. Like if you cannot write a ton of articles and you are focusing on the quality and you're giving each piece the chance to do well on its own, that's going to be fine. If you can write one per week, focus on making that one piece per week the best you possibly can. And um, length totally depends on the story you are writing. Um, I like to say write using as many words as you need, not using many more than you need. Like there is this kind of rule of thumb that I like to refer to as how can you tell the story without losing important parts of the story using the least amount of words that you possibly can. So your reader doesn't get bored, the story doesn't get too long, but you have the most valuable and just meaningful story packaged into the number of words that you need. A great medium story can be 800 words, it can be 2000 words, it can be 5000 words and anything in between. We will never tell you this is the word count you should aim for because it just doesn't work that way. And even with our boost nominations, we submit stories for a boost. I, I saw in our backlog of last month, we had stories nominated that were like four minute reads. And we had a story that was a 19 minute read or 21 minute one. read, something yeah. like that. Yeah, it totally depends on the exact story on the topic and also on your target audience. Yeah, I don't have much to add to that. I think I agree. Um, write it as long as you need to. Use. 
go through with a red pen and cut out like if you can safely remove a paragraph without it impacting the main point of a story remove it like a lot of people like i personally am very prone to fluff so i take a very hard line with that yeah all right awesome i think we um replied to most of the questions um i have seen one more question from uh one of our previous students asking about how this compares or is different to um the previous version of the medium writing academy if you are already part or if you have joined medium writing academy in the past uh keep an eye on your inbox i'm going to send out an email within the next 24 hours on uh how you can get all the new updates all the bonuses and also participate in the live cohort if you've just walked through the academy over the last couple of weeks or months and now want to get our feedback on your work if you have any other questions if you're still on the fence you're not sure if it's the right time if this is going to be what you need feel free to email us at support at mediumwritingacademy.com or reply to any of our emails let us know what you want to know what kind of information you're looking for and we'll get back to you as soon as possible just make sure you're on time because uh, the live cohort is closing in about two days, so we don't have a lot of time left and uh, we don't want anyone to miss out if um, you already know that you want to join and you're just missing the deadline, that's kind of a pity, but um, if you're here, I'm assuming that you have a lot of the information you're looking for and you are um, going to make the decision to join us and learn and write with us. Thank you for being in this session with us. Let us know if you enjoyed it. Let us know what you liked most. Um, shoot us an email if you enjoyed the session and if you learned something new. And thank you, Zuli, for taking the time to be here, for once again sharing all your insights. And um, I'll see you over the next few days in another bonus session that we will host that we're not announcing just yet. So keep an eye on your inboxes if you are excited about joining one more session with us live this week. You cannot keep me away from these. I love doing them. So great <laughs> to see you all. Looking forward to seeing you uh, potentially at the next one on Thursday. And yeah, thanks for submitting all your questions. It's been so great to, to talk about this kind of stuff. Bye, everybody. Bye.